Sherry, and I'm gonna borrow your word from the other day. It's a titillating Tuesday. It's a titillating Tuesday. <laughs> but I noticed you didn't twirl around like you usually do. Something going on today? No, uh, yeah, there's hair. Uh, <laughs> Theo Barrett, our Emmy nominated hairstylist, he, when I tell you my dressing room smells like burnt hair and, <laughs> and oil and grease, and so he, it took him so, he brushed it. And you know when you're gonna brush it and brush it, and it's so straight that it's gotta stay that way. So when I, and I said, I'm a twirl, he was like, no, you're not gonna twirl. So, <laughs> so it was like, one, not, one piece can be out of place. It's gotta stay like this for the entire show. So my neck is gonna be like this the entire <laughs> time. <laughs> but y'all, it's so funny, because speaking of hair, Beyonce and her mother Tina are on the cover of the latest issue of Essence <laughs> magazine. Inside, Beyonce, look at this, I love this. Beyonce opens up about her new line of hair care products, and these pictures are incredible. And they brought back so many memories. I mean, it was like, I, I just had so many memories of my mother pressing my hair. You know those memories of you sitting in the chair by the stove? I think I still got the burns from the hot comb <laughs> right on my ear. You know, it's always when you get with your girlfriends, you can show them. That's when my mother burned me right here. And then you got that burn on the back of your neck. And I remember when I was in that chair and my mother would be doing my hair, don't let me start crying. Don't let me start crying. Cause you know what your mother always said? I'm gonna give you something to cry about. <laughs> keep on, keep on. And then I'm, but I would be like, mama, but you burn me. You remember this? Ah, ah, ah. You know, you burn me. And you know, it always tripped me out when they said, stop before I give you something to cry about. That's why I'm crying now. <laughs> I don't need another reason to cry. I used to walk in the house and when I saw that chair next to the stove and that hot cone, cause you know, the hot cone, I, oh my gosh, I was so mad at Madam C.J. Walker for inventing that <laughs> hot cone. Because I don't think Madam C.J. Walker took into account an 11 year old. It always smelled like burning hair and nobody ever cleaned off the hot cone. It just, the, the, it, you, you remember when you see your hair sizzle on the hot cone and you was like, did that come from me? <laughs> The hot comb was always in the junk drawer. It was always greasy. It was always hair stuck to it. So when you put it in the fire, I'm looking at Beyonce and Tina and, and Blue Ivy, and what's the, the little one's name? The, her, her, the youngest daughter? Rumi. Rumi. Uh -huh. And if you, you know, it would be on the fire, you smelled everybody else's hair on the doggone hot comb. And then they use, like if they had to braid your hair or, or um, comb it with the brush, they use that special grease. You know, it was a green grease. What was that? Me Dax, it, it was, Sherry, it was Murray's for the men and Dax for the women. When I tell you that, yeah. that oh my gosh, they would put that green, uh, we had either green or blue. They were, they were, my grandmother, I would sit on, on the floor between my grandmother's legs and she would part it and put the grease in there. You couldn't hug nobody because their whole face <laughs> would be greasy, but. When they, when she put the, she would press my hair for Easter, church Sunday, and all I could hear is <laughs> just on there. So that sizzling sound. So, you know, when you grow up and you realize they was cooking your hair. 
And I look and I go, Mama, that's why I ain't got my edges now. Because you, you, had, you had them so straight. But there was always a difference between when my mother did my hair and when my cousin did my hair. Because my cousin knew how to do it. But my mom would always do my hair and made me look like one of her sisters. I don't know what. <laughs> I literally, and she'd be like, don't look pretty, and I'm eight years old. Why do I look? <laughs> At eight years old, I look like I got a 401k. What? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. My mother and her hairstyles. Oh, my gosh. And there was one I remember. That, you know when you had the, the big hair on top of your head? My cousin would put a straw and wrap my hair around the straw. So every time I went in the doorway, it freaking caught the, my hair. But the kids today, they have it so much better because they have much better hair products for them that are available. And they will never know or understand what we went through. But, I, but the memories, I treasure those memories uh, of my mother, my aunties, and my cousin. So, Beyonce, thank you, and thank you, Mama Tina, for this walk down memory lane. And the latest issue of Essence is on newsstands today. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, y'all, Travis Kelsey is still partying hard after winning the Super Bowl. So, over the weekend, Travis spent 48 hours in Australia supporting Taylor while she's on tour. They hung out. They visited the zoo for a date. Look at him look all booed up while Taylor is explaining something to him. But let me tell y'all, as soon as he got back to the U.S., it was party time! <laughs> Travis! <laughs> Travis went to a bachelor party and had a boys' weekend in Vegas with his teammate Patrick Mahomes. And I say, you see, this is what happens when you take your man to the zoo, all right? <laughs> I'm still going, like, this is when you wish you were somebody's girlfriend. Taylor, your man just won the Super Bowl and you took him to see the llamas? <laughs> you know good and well when he gets to Australia, you supposed to look at him and have on a maid's outfit, a stripper outfit. <laughs> he won the Super Bowl. Like, Taylor, you, y'all wasn't even supposed to be coming out of the hotel. You supposed to have, uh, I mean, you supposed to have a sexy, I'm telling a sexy Super Bowl cheerleader outfit on. You know, you supposed to have pom poms everywhere. T Taylor Swift, he, he won the Super Bowl. You supposed to have tired his behind out so bad that he called Patrick and said, dude, I'm t I can't even make it to Vegas. <laughs> The zoo? He not 11 years old? He didn't win an arts and craft contest? He won the Super Bowl. You know how much testosterone he's got rolling around? You were supposed... I mean, literally, when, when he got on your private plane, you were supposed to look at Travis and say, when we get to Australia, I'm gonna freak you down under. <laughs> like, that's what you supposed to do. And I'm gonna say to the men in the audience, clap if you agree with me. That's what I thought. <laughs> Who takes their man to the zoo? He probably looking at those parrots like, I can't wait to join Patrick. When we get to Vegas, we gonna light it up. All that gambling, women, and liquor, and you talking to him about the koala bears, girl. <laughs> Next time, Taylor, you gotta take him party. You gotta, like, make him feel good. The zoo, I'm just not for the zoo. That was, mm-mm. <laughs> no, no, no. Your goal is to do, get so he don't want to go to Vegas. But Victoria Beckham is all for being a mother-in-law, but she is not ready to be a grandmother. That's what she said. So Victoria and David's son, Brooklyn, he is married to um, Nicola Peltz. And when Victoria sat down with Vogue and they asked her if she is ready to become a grandmother, Victoria was so thrown off that she got hot. Take a look. Are you excited to be a grandmother? Is that going oh, to happen Jesus. soon? Jesus. <laughs> what? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Hang on. I, I don't think it's happening just yet. Unless you guys know something that I don't, it's not happening just yet. But, you know, hopefully one day if I am blessed, then that would be wonderful. But we're not there just yet. <laughs> it's hot. Guys, it's hot in here. 
Let me tell you something. Victoria is only, she's 49 years old. She does not want to be a grandmother yet, okay? Because the stuff that comes along with being a grandmother that Victoria is not ready for. When you are a grandmother, you got to give up a bunch of your time. Do you know on Instagram, I'm seeing all of these parents complain because their mothers don't want to be around for the kids. And they keep saying, you, you kept saying to me, when am I going to be a grandmother? Well, here they are. <laughs> That's what I'm seeing all over Instagram. So Victoria Beckham, she's like, she still looks good. She's still partying. She's still running around the house naked with David Beckham. <laughs> talking about, okay, you talking about somebody talking about bending like Beckham, Victoria Beckham. <laughs> oh my God. Am I gonna get in trouble for that? Probably. They gonna probably call me the human resources. But Victoria, literally, she's like, I'm posh spice, not old spice. I'm not, no. You, it's so... You gotta be ready to step into that season of grandmother. And have you, have you realized, like, I used to call my grandmother grandmama. N nobody wants to be called grandma anymore. Because, the, the, like, you, every, it's just rebranded. Because when you say grandma, you think of a gray hair, a cane, and a shawl. <laughs> just, you know, you know, nobody wants that. Grandma has totally been rebranded. Like, all the celebrities. Cheryl Lee Ralph wants to be called glamma, okay? <laughs> She's like, no, no grandma. Chris Jenner's grandkids call her Lovey, all right? Some people want to be called Nana. Now, with me, I don't want to be called none of that. I would just say, you know what, y'all? Just call me Sherry. All of you. <laughs> call me Sherry. Give me a kiss. Sherry. I'm telling you, I want my grandkids to walk into the house going, hey, friend! That's what I want. <laughs> and de definitely, this is the word, I, the phrase, I don't want to be called, don't call me Big Mama. Uh-uh. <laughs> Remember, that used to be the word. We going over Big Mama's house. Uh, no, sir. <laughs> big Mama sound like you, get, you got a big old booty and you just walking around just... <laughs> and you, you cooking. I got some stuff on the stove for you. No. So, Victoria, I don't blame you, girl. I know it was getting hot in there. You got a little bit of... You got a while to go now. <laughs> TikTok is in an uproar over a birthday dinner debate. So TikToker Sean Lance, he posted a video telling the story about how he skipped his friend's birthday dinner because it was too expensive. Take a look. For his birthday, he chose a restaurant and the cheapest entree is $41. And so I didn't go and now he's mad at me. The reason I decided not to go is because the plan was dinner and then going out and the place he chose to go out already had a $35 ticket. And I am a little bit broke as it is, so I was like, okay, I'll skip the dinner and then just go out. When I met them out after the dinner, it was clear that the vibe was a little bit off and a mutual friend was like, yeah, he was talking shit, like kind of mad that you didn't go. And I was like, yeah, I don't really know what to say. I'm not really looking to spend the equivalent of a week of grocery money on a single night out. Like, I think I made a fair compromise, so I don't know what to tell you. Okay, first of all, do all these young kids talk that daggone fast? Oh my gosh. But some people agree with Sean, saying that friends who make you feel bad for being tight on money are not your friends. While others, Woo! that's what you feel. <laughs> others feel like if you can't spend $100 once a year, are you really a friend? Now, I'm not mad at Sean. But here, you know, I feel like here's the thing. This is how social media is. You know, now, Sean, did you at once, you know, did you call your friend to complain or did you want all 20,000 of your followers to tell what the issue is? Okay, people get on social media too much. But I agree with this, I agree with him. When you plan something, you gotta look at the financial level of, of your friendship with somebody. Because in today's, the, what we're going through today, you know, Everybody can't afford it. You might be going out for lobster, but one of your friends can only afford top ramen. So <laughs> that may not be somebody that, that you want to invite to a big expensive dinner. You invite them to something else. And I know when, when my bestie, uh, Emmy winner Niecy Nash started getting big, she started winning all of these awards and going out to red carpets for everything that she was doing. Her taste in restaurants started changing. <laughs> when I tell you, I'm telling when we went, we went from getting uh, salsa and chips, everything, now she want filet mignon everywhere. <laughs> and I had to tell, I said, all of us are not working like you working, Nisi. I can't, all, some of this stuff I can't do. She wanted to fly to a private island. I said, I can't afford a private island on a girl's trip. We, I got a Groupon right here that we can go to. <laughs> what you doing? We
and see it's so easy. We just, we all gonna go to a private island. Who that? I'm not. I can go to Long Island. I, I might even be able to make it to Rhode Island, but the Cayman Islands is not out of my budget. So she, she wanted this girl's trip in some country I couldn't even pronounce. And I said, I can't afford to do that. I said, I'm gonna give you some flowers, so keep it moving. But I hate when you go out with a big group and you try to just order, you, you, you're not hungry, so you order a little appetizer because you're trying to, you know, you're trying to keep your coins. And, and then there's somebody who always says, we gonna split, the, let's split the bill evenly. <laughs> And I don't mind, when I go out with my girlfriends, I don't mind splitting the bill evenly, but I'm not, I don't drink. And it's always the one who wants to split the bill and had all this liquor. <laughs> all the liquor. And they want to split the bill evenly. So, Sean, I hear you, I'm on your side. I think your friend should be more understanding. But at least get him something. I don't know, John, what's the cheap gift that you can get somebody? Like, just Oh, show... I, I think when your money's funny, get people lottery tickets. Because not only is it affordable to buy, but they might actually win some money. You know what, that's a really great idea. Yeah. I got that from Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg loves yeah. lottery tickets. Yeah. And some, and some good, okay, all right, let me stop. But uh, you know what I also tell people when they say, because they go, Sherry, what do we give you? Because you have everything. Kim Whitley asked me that. And I had her write me a letter of what I meant to her, and I, had, I said, frame it. So she gave me a beautiful frame letter. It was in her own handwriting. <laughs> and I have it on my wall. So I'm starting to ask everybody, when they say, well, I wanna give you some of your birthday, write me a letter and put, you put it in the frame and I will put it on my wall. And that's, she complained the whole time because of her arthritis. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Never heard somebody complain more than Kim Whitley on write me a letter about how much she loved me on my little talk show. That's what she ended it with. And I love that you got your little talk show, Love Kill. <laughs> oh my gosh, but that's free. Lottery tickets, write them a letter. Now, a woman on the internet has a dilemma with the child bully. She says that she took her toddler, aged daughter, to the playground. And when they were there, the daughter encountered a four-year-old bully who was shoving all the other kids. But the bully's dad was not doing anything. He just said, you promised you would be a good girl today. So she asked, he said, uh, she asked, at what point do I let the dad parent before saying something to him or his bully daughter? To, okay, it don't take long. I'm telling you, when you, when you a mother that's protective, I am the same way. But I'm gonna tell you, sometimes you gotta be careful. When I first, it was when I, when I was co-hosting The View, Jeffrey was about uh, two or three, and I moved to Harlem, and I took Jeffrey to the park, and there was this little girl messing with him. I mean, she would not let him climb the monkey bars. She just was messing, and I, I watched. I walked over to her, and I said, sweetheart, you're climbing the monkey bars the wrong way. Get down and go around. That's what I said. Next thing I know, her mother came over <laughs> and her mother did this. <sighs> what the hell is going on over here? <laughs> now, let me tell you something. Hell was the nice word that I am saying when she took that thing. Let me tell you who I'm not fighting. A lady who take a long... <laughs> and that ash be long and then just fall and she don't even look at it. I told Jeffrey, I said, baby, it's time to go. It's time to go. <laughs> and Jeffrey said to me, he said, can't you just talk to her? I said, did you see what she said to me? I said, can you see the ash still in my eye? <laughs> I said, if, so if somebody willing to curse you out in front of her child, she's not afraid to fight, okay? And, and you, so you gotta know. <laughs> <laughs> when you got your kids. Yes, you take up for your kids, but you gotta know what kind of parent you are dealing with. So I, <laughs> I would say you gotta scope out if the parent is a little bit off there. Cause if the parent got rollers in her hair, uh, she's smoking a cigarette and she got a belt over her shoulder, <laughs> she is not one to play with. Oh God, I remember being in school and some people, and if somebody bullied me, I come from the Shepherds in Chicago, everybody know them, they, 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 they off their rockers, I swear, all my family. And if I ran home crying because somebody bullied me, not on, when I tell you all my aunties, my auntie Ina, my auntie Bunny, my auntie Shantaeus, I mean, we all got crazy names. They all get in the car and roll up on the one in the school and they all get out of that car and it was over, with, they knew the Shepherds was coming. So, but I, I ain't got all of them to back me up now. So 
I say, take your kid, go to another playground. But if he is saying to her that you got a parent who's saying, are you gonna be a good girl? Then, yeah, go on, light into him, light into him. But if he don't know what to do with her, he not gonna know what to do with her. <laughs> we gotta protect our kids. I don't think we said, we, we have been to that playground. I think we found another playground. You ain't been back since. <laughs> Oh, that was good. That lady scared. Why would I say that ash was that long when she <laughs> Woo! Y'all, we got a great show for you today. <laughs> Later on, a special performance from Aladdin on Broadway. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Up next, Grammy-winning singer Jody Watley is here. We'll be right back. a Grammy-winning singer to her one-of-a-kind style. My first guest has been leaving her mark on our culture for over 50 years. And it is no wonder her latest single is called Everlasting. Would you give it up for the everlasting Jody Watley? <laughs> I'm so excited that you're coming. I am wearing my big hoop earrings in your honor. I noticed that, Oh yes. my goodness, because I gotta tell you, looking at you, just growing up with you, I remember you blending the music and the fashion, which like, you, it, when I would wait for you to come out or look at your album covers, it was just like you, you were so a fashion queen. And that wasn't the norm at the time when you were out. Right, I, you know, I, I wanted to represent that black girls could be edgy and fashion forward and yes. mix it up and, you know, you could wear jeans with Chanel or mm. a $10 thrift store dress and yes. be fabulous. I'm telling you, <laughs> like, you didn't let the fashion make you, you made the yeah. fashion. Oh, yes, oh, yes. thank you. <laughs> now, when you were out here, did, did like any of the, the 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 magazines come for you to do you know to to they wanted to feature your magazines anything like that happen? Oh yeah, at the time, uh, my first layout for Harper's Bazaar and then also Vogue, um, and it wasn't. I think people are used to it now yeah. seeing the girls on covers, mm -hmm. but when I first did uh, Harper's Bazaar and Vogue, um, I flew myself to New York because the label the record label didn't, did not. No, they were like, well, what does fashion have to do with selling records? Oh my gosh, <laughs> really? And so you know, I bought my ticket, and I'm like, look, I'm going to be photographed by Scavulo, who has photographed, you know, yes. she's one of the greatest. Yes. And so you know. When other people don't get it, you have to get it. Yes. And then always invest in yourself. You're so beautiful. Now you are beautiful, look at you. <laughs> I, I, I am like this. You know, I'm, I'm so excited to meet you in person and somebody who's gonna be so upset is Kim Whitley because she loves you <laughs> as much as I do. And I don't know if you received, we did a video, a happy birthday video to you. Did you get our happy birthday video? You know, I did and I was gonna ask you, so you changed the lyric though. Yeah, it was did. looking for a rich love. I said so we was looking for a rich love, yeah. Did we? <laughs> 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 but we had, I got the video because I didn't know if you had gotten it, so I had, we, I had the video. I wanted to show, show it. I want to see okay, it. Okay, we're yes. going to show the video we made for Jody Watley. <laughs> we love you. You are the anthem of my life, girl. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. That was wrong. I'm oh, sorry. Yes. I'm always looking uh, for a new love. Yes, yes, yes. You are always looking for a new love. That's why you two divorces in. We I know. Enjoy Can you day. make another song, Jody? Right. I'm looking for a I'm rich love, love, baby. Oh, that was real gold diggish of me. Yeah, it was. Sorry. 
<laughs> we both love you so, so doggone much. So we're happy that you got well, it. Well, I love you both, too. <laughs> and that was, I just loved, I loved it. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I want to, uh, you're welcome. Cause we're going to do another one for you. It's going to even be better, girl. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so your 1989 song, Friends. Y'all remember Friends? Oh, my gosh. You, it was with Rakim, mm -hmm. and it was the first song to feature a rapper on it. Now, I did not know that the label did not want Rakim. They wanted somebody else. Um, they wanted uh, Will Smith because Will was more pop, and Rakim, you know, the god MC, like yes. total hip hop, not mainstream, but he's the only one that I could hear his voice with this song. You know, friends are hard to find. It's yeah. about betrayal and backstabbing and so luckily he was into it and uh, it's the it wasn't the first but it's the first to cross over on the um, three charts top 10. Yes so, it yeah. did on three charts. I think it was like the it, it was the three charts it was a it, it was the R&B chart it was the hot the, 100. Hot 100. And, and hip hop. And yeah, hip hop so charts cool. that it yeah. crossed over. You had to fight them to get Rakim, yeah. huh? Again, you know, you got to believe in yourself, and um, that's what Everlasting is about. And never give up. And when people don't get it, like I said, you, you got to get it yourself. You got to get yeah. it. Because it starts with you. It starts with you, yes. Now, not only do we have Everlasting, but we got the Jody Watley Show, which is on Sirius XM. Yes. And you, look at this right here. This is what's so cool about your show because you get to interview like just uh, all of the icon, the musical yeah. icons, and you just interviewed TLC. How yeah. was that? It was, you know, it was great. It's um, History Makers, and uh, I interviewed TLC and In Vogue for this, this mm. episode. And what was great about uh, TLC, T Boss told me how. Uh, my vocal on my song, Still a Thrill, yeah. inspired her to sing in the low voice. She said that, girl, you're responsible for my everything because I didn't know I could sing that low until I heard you say, you know it's funny, funny how time flies. And so in the interview, she sang it. You know? She did. So she, and it was surreal for me to hear her because, you know, I, I love them. So, oh, my yeah. gosh. It's, it, I, and I love hearing about your st the stories and about the people that you have inspired. But you know what? I, I'm in complete awe, and I want to do something with you. It's called, uh, it's time for a pinch me moment. Okay? okay? All right. I got to so, see this. Okay, you got to see it, because I'm going <laughs> to ask you a question. <laughs> you had an unforgettable experience with the legendary Aretha Franklin. Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> So, Miss Franklin, Queen of Soul, um, I was, you know, back when I was on Soul Train, I was like 14, 15 years old. And uh, she, was, she was doing a show in Los Angeles at mm -hmm. the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. And so she selected me to be in her show. She had four dancers that would come out during Natural Woman yeah. to represent a different side of her. So she picked me to be the entertainer and she always called me Miss Jody, and she said, Miss Jody, I just see you as the entertainer. So throughout my career, she's always um, so supportive and, um, you know, always, again, encouraging to just keep going and keep doing what you're doing and don't worry about what people have oh, to say Oh, my about goodness. It. I love that. <laughs> I love that yes. Miss Aretha, she encouraged you because when I went to a party, she kicked me out the party. <laughs> when I, and I was standing just like, you know, that, we, we, we started talking and she invited me to her like her birthday party, Jody, and I was just like you standing behind her, but the button of my sweater got caught in her dress. When I tell you, and I pulled, no. and I pulled a Miss Aretha's dress and she saw it was just a mess. And next thing I know, they, I was escorted out the party. I was like, what? <laughs> She wasn't looking for no new love with me, not at all. <laughs> so, now no, you're, she, you do that no, to you, huh? She, she, and anyone who has met her knows that, she, yeah, she's no joke. Now, she is she, no joke, no. not at all. Not was she no joke. Now, I love this because we were talking about Everlasting. This is your latest single. Yeah. It's called Everlasting. You look so, you are so beautiful. Thank you. So beautiful. <laughs> But why do you feel that Everlasting is important to share with the world now? Because people are going through 
so much, you mm -hmm. know, and, um, you know, as a writer, I just felt like there should be a song that, you know, uh, one of my favorite lines in the song, um, don't let the worst of life get the best of you. Mm -hmm. And I just think that, you know, to remind people through music, that's the power of music to, you know, never give up, to keep going, stay everlasting. You know, and people, how, how are you doing? I'm everlasting. Yeah. <laughs> it is, how yeah. you say it. Music can change. Music can change a heart, and oh, I know yeah. every song that you got. I have my. I don't. I didn't even bring it. My my album, uh, Jody Watley, and it would just. It changed everything. Just going through stuff and listening to you and feeling like so joyful, and that's Thank what you, you did to me. So I know Everlasting is doing that to people. Yeah, now. it's number two on the soul charts over in the UK, and. <laughs> You know, and you know, my music has changed a lot, you know, yeah. for a lot of people that if you haven't kept up, you know, 80s, 90s, the 2000s, the 10s, and still the 20s, and always growing and evolving. Absolutely. And being fearless. That's like it. you. Uh, well, fearless like you, <laughs> Diva. Jody, I want to say thank you so much for being here. I, 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 well, I'm, I'm still like. Y'all, be sure to stream and download Everlasting and listen to the Jody Watley Show on Sirius XM. Up next, a star of Broadway's Aladdin, Michael James Scott. Keep it right here. Jody Watley. <laughs>genie in Disney's Aladdin musical, which is celebrating its 10th anniversary on Broadway. 10. So today we celebrate him for his amazing accomplishment and the mark he is making in black history. Please welcome Michael James Scott. Oh my gosh! Can I just say, it is such an honor to be here on the Sherry Shepherd Show! <laughs> to have you here because, I mean, you came on my very first season. Yes. And that you helped kick it off when you came and, and y'all was just over here. There we that are. was right there. <laughs> and I was just in awe when you came by. Well, we, first of all, to be able to get to come and see what has happened, I mean, you know, y'all have blown up here on the series <laughs> uh, in, this, in this year. But... You know, we also have to welcome you know, our neighbors down the street. You and know what I mean? From Broadway it. to get you, you know, get it going because we knew it was going to be fierce. Thank you. Yes, so. and I, I, we appreciate the welcome. I want to congratulate you because this, this is a hard feat. You know, say ten years mm. on Broadway, mm. everybody is still coming to see you. Like, and you've been there. You've been there from the beginning. What is the best part of the show? You know, Aladdin is about joy. There's, yeah. It's all about joy. And don't we want joy right now? I mean, yes, we I all, do. it is yes. so important. So, you know, there's so much uncertainty in our world. There's so much, you know, some darkness. Aladdin is light. Aladdin yes. is love. Aladdin is laughter. That is what I'm so proud to be a part of the show because people, you know, they connect to that. That's what you yes. want to feel. It's like, it's like Cherry. I mean, there's that joy. It's the joy so that it's, comes it's, out, yeah. That for me is a blessing and such a, a gift to be able to bring to people. And I think that's why people are still coming. <laughs> it really is. And like when you're on that stage and you're dancing around and you're singing, like your character is one of the most over the top <laughs> characters in all of Disney. And you can see the joy from the stage when you're on that stage. And you can see the kids like in, in the adults are like, everybody's just smiling. Yes. So like, are you anything like your character? Absolutely not. <laughs> My shoes. <laughs> no, not a not at all. I mean, listen, it is it is it is not uh, it, it's such a, an amazing thing to be oh. able to get to play. So oh 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 there it is. Let it, let it, let it. Ah! To be able to get to, to, to be a man of color yes. who, uh, you know, to show that I'm, I, 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 we smile, we laugh, we, Absolutely. you know, so to be able to do that, it is just an incredible thing. I, my mom and my dad, they did not know what to do with me I was growing up, right? So <laughs> to be able to do this role where I, I'm, I'm literally getting to run around and be like a big kid and get paid yes. for it, I'm like, thank you, Lord. <laughs> like, I just want to know, because 
during Broadway is grueling work. You have eight shows a week, yes, right? Yes, we do. How do you keep that joy going for eight shows, sometimes two shows in a day? Yes, the audience there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. It is, well, I, I've said it before, fried chicken and a prayer is definitely <laughs> a, a, a part of it. But, you know, I am, I, I get to actually directly address the audience. So yes. for me as the genie, you know, uh, the, the curtain comes down and there, there's my chocolate self standing right there, right? <laughs> so, so to be able to get to do that and be that person, right, when you first come into the to the show, it is, it's such an electrifying thing. Yes, you know, you is. have a live studio audience yes, every day, so you feel that energy. And we were talking about it, the commercial, like, it's that's amazing, the energy. The, the energy. Electrifying. I feel it. So, so that's what it, it the, for me, doing it eight times a week, it doesn't feel like work because the audience brings you All in. All what you need. Yeah. This is... I'm glad you say that, and, and I'm so I'm so thrilled for you because you are making history mm. as a black actor in a lead role in one of the biggest shows in the world. So for you, why is representation important on Broadway? Oh gosh, uh, representation matters. Um, you know, I come from a community who really cared about uh, their young artists. It didn't matter the color of their skin, it didn't matter where they came from, but they just saw the wonderment of, in a child's eyes. Yes. And so for me, I also had parents who just said yes, mm -hmm. um, and uh, they wanted to sort of do, you know, give what they didn't have. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to see myself uh, for me, it's not even about seeing myself. It's about putting myself out there so that others, the other little, you know, uh, all these amazing, colorful children across everywhere and young yes. folks everywhere can see that it is possible. It is possible. I want to say I know, watching you, when I first, my daddy took me to the theater and I saw, when I think of home, and it was Stephanie Mills. Hey. I knew I wanted to be an actor. Mm. I didn't know what it entailed, but I know watching that lady on that stage made me want to be an actor because of Stephanie Mills. And I know that there's little brown boys and girls who are watching you going, I want to do that. Yes. So you, Michael James Scott, you're not going anywhere because up next, a special performance from Aladdin on Broadway. <laughs> Don't miss it. We'll be right back. Here with a special performance of Friend Like Me, please welcome back Michael James Scott and the cast from Broadway's hit musical, Aladdin.
much for being here. And for more info on Aladdin on Broadway, go to SherryShowTV.com. And everybody in our studio audience, y'all getting tickets to see the show. Yeah. You ain't never had a friend like me. You ain't never had a friend like me. You'll be right back. We'll be right back. Anna Yip from New York is playing Sherry's hit list. So, Beyonce is the first black woman with the number one hit on Billboard's Hot Country Chart. So you got 30 seconds to name five of the top 10 female artists currently on the Billboard Hot 100 list. So right. Anna Yip, we're gonna put 30 seconds on the clock and go. Okay, uh, Billie Eilish, Dua Lipa, Miley Cyrus, Taylor Swift, and... Come on. Doja Cat, Doja Cat, Doja Cat, Doja Cat! There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So, Anna, yet for getting five correct, you win a Casio Tone LKS 450 keyboard to bring your music to life. We'll be right back. Yeah. Sherry, we'll be right back. It's time for one last laugh. So today's laugh is a video taken on a cruise ship where an unlikely contestant wowed the crowd in a dance-off. Take a look. Grandpa's gone wild. <laughs> Thanks for the laugh. We'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. Sherry, we'll be right back. I hope something on today's show put a smile on your face. Tomorrow from Dancing with the Stars, Maxim Shmurfkowski will be here. So join us then for the best time in daytime. Bye. Yeah.